Are you the Are you the happiest woman in America? I don't know. I mean, I'm not a crier. I'm a cold hearted wasp. So my husband jokes that I cry for six seconds every year. Um, but th this could be it, Benny, on your show. This would be record setting. Um, I, I, it's just surreal to me. I'm so happy for the J6ers, the text that I'm getting from them, their loved ones, their attorneys. Um, it, you can't imagine the burden that has been lifted off of their hearts and their shoulders. Uh, finally seeing hope after four years of this ruthless, reckless, bloodthirsty, unlawful, rogue DOJ trying to destroy their lives. Um, so, uh, you know, what Mike Davis says, and I believe him when he says this, and he will have the access, I think, to do this. Uh, not only will the J6ers be exonerated and pardoned and their sentence commuted, their sentences commuted, but we need a full-blown investigation into this DOJ. Merrick Garland, Lisa Monaco, Matthew Graves, the DC US attorney. Donald Trump, please let me make the phone call to Matthew Graves. Please let me make the call demanding his immediate resignation. So we need that full blown investigation, Benny, and the collusion with the DOJ and the Biden White House to bring the two criminal indictments against Donald Trump. We have to have retribution. Not, I, I'm not, not saying justice, justice sounds great. These people have to pay for what they've done mm. to Donald Trump his family, more than 1,500 of his supporters, J6ers, and quite frankly, the rest of the country. And we haven't even gotten to the J6 committee mm. and the culpability of those people, starting with Liz Cheney, for defrauding uh, and, and misleading the American people and committing crimes in the process. There's so much to get to here, but let, let's begin with what you just said about the Biden Department of Justice and its corrupts corrupt rat's nest that you have been on this program for years, Julie, exposing. You are a very lonely voice. You were in the courtroom for these J6 trials. You were the only person there yeah. that was there to tell a truthful story, there to advocate for the political prisoners tortured yes. by our own American gulags run by the, the sickos in the, uh, the, the Department of Justice. Now, uh, I want to begin there, and then I want to, and then I want to go to work on Liz Cheney. But let's 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 focus in on Matthew Graves, Merrick Garland, and everybody who have been apparently running illegal operations against the will of the Supreme Court. There must there must be retribution for this. There used to be you used to be able to put someone in the stocks right and hang a sign and say don't steal right don't do this. There has to be an example made. To, for everyone to know, you cannot do this to Americans. They'll keep doing it if there's not an example made. And Benny, I, I wanted to thank you because, yes, I was the only person reporter, at least on this side, in these courtrooms. Yes. Um, but you helped bring this to your audience. And I want to thank you and your amazing production team for having me on when, yes, a lot of people wouldn't touch January 6th. They didn't care about these people. I mean, you had people like Ben Shapiro, I'm sorry, who said he wanted all of these people behind bars. So there were very few people who would touch my reporting. And I want to thank you so much uh, on behalf of the J6ers as well for highlighting this and bringing this to your audience. Um, but yes, there must be retribution. There must be consequences, not just top DOJ, Matthew Graves, his line prosecutors and these judges. Let's not forget the individuals who made all of this possible. Mm -hmm. And that is the judges on the DC District Court and Circuit Court. They put their judicial imprimatur on the most egregious weaponization of the DOJ against a targeted group of Americans mm -hmm. who are exercising their First Amendment rights on January 6th. Yes, a few committed crimes, nothing like they have brought, uh, nothing compared to what they brought against these individuals to other political protesters in Washington. These judges must be held to account. And now that we're gonna have the House and the Senate and the White House, we need to bring a few of these judges before the American people. We need to start mm. impeachment proceedings for the first time in decades against sitting federal judges for denying these people their 1A, their 2A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 8A amendment rights, mm. destroying their lives, because these people dare to go into their personal professional fiefdom 
of Washington, D.C. I still have the words of Beryl Howell, the Obama appointee, who has weaponized her own bench against Donald Trump for years, oversaw the Mueller probe, oversaw the initial uh, set DOJ investigation into Donald Trump, and then, of course, this entire thing that was happening in the courthouse against J. Sixers. She looked at a man from Texas and said, you drove all the way here from Texas on January 6th to hear the president speak. So that's not a crime. These judges have to be held to account also, Benny, and we need to make sure that that happens as well. So that would be, the process would be the beginning with the impeachment of the judges, the firing, obviously, of Merrick Garland, all of his staff, Matthew Graves, serves at the pleasure of the president. That's right. And then an investigation. You believe yeah. a counter investigation needs to be launched into those inside of the Biden Justice Department that brought these charges and continue to demonically bring these charges, even when they have been spanked at the Supreme Court. Benny, the FBI, Chris Ray's FBI, arrested a man from Georgia mm. yesterday mm. on Election Day in a swing state, a critical state. They arrested a man from Georgia for his participation in the events of January 6th. This is still ongoing. They are still hauling people to Washington, D.C. to face these judges, to face, look at what happened yesterday. Let's think about this. You had a red wave we've never seen before. Mm. Even in blue states, my home state of Illinois, New Jersey, Virginia, New York, the the narrowing of uh, of the gap between Democrats and Republicans there I mean, they came within, he, Donald Trump came within striking distance in Virginia and in New yes. Jersey. Yes. There was one exception, one exception, Benny, the city of Washington, D.C. voted for, for uh, Kamala Harris 94%. How in the world can we continue to allow these residents of Washington, D.C. to sit on jury trials in judgment of Trump supporters. Mm. This has been going on for two and a half years. DOJ has a 100% conviction rate for January 6th defendants before DC juries. And not a single judge, Benny, will allow a trial to be moved out of Washington to a neighboring jurisdiction where they have a slight chance of perhaps a fair trial. All of this has to end. It has to end today. I hope that Donald Trump says something quickly or his team says something quickly to these judges in this Department of Justice. Mm. And I know, I have faith that whoever takes over the DOJ will conduct a full-blown investigation into all of what the DOJ, the Biden White House, the DC US Attorney's Office, and those federal judges did uh, to, to, uh, to these um, Americans. I, I, you know, I, I certainly am no constitutional scholar. I only, I, I just simply have conversations. I run a talk show here where I talk with smart people. Okay. And <laughs> maybe some of it'll rub off, but it doesn't make any sense to me why there would be federal judges inside of a place that isn't even real. Washington DC isn't a state. It's not real. It's members can't vote. The, the people they send to Congress don't even vote, right? Eleanor Holmes Norton. Why are we giving full jurisdiction and the capacity to assault and destroy these Americans' lives. Why does the federal court, why, why does that system even exist in Washington, DC? Why, well, why mustn't it be something that is outside in a actual real state, even if it is Maryland or Virginia? It, 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 right. it seems insane to me, actually. Um, DC used to be run by Congress. We used to have like a, the Speaker of the House was like the mayor of DC, effectively. It was just seen as a federal city and it wasn't a real place. It was never designed to be a real place, actually. Right. I mean, I would implore Donald Trump to sign an executive order, shutting down the DC federal court system, shutting down the mm. DC US attorney's office and shutting down the Washington FBI field office. These Good. are, this is, the, this is the access of evil. Enough. This yes. is the rot in our political system. They all work together, Benny. I've seen it, I've seen it. Half of the judges on the DC bench came out of the DC US Attorney's Office. These are their colleagues. These are their buddies. These are the people whose kids go to private schools together. It's not a joke when you know we make fun of the cocktail parties in Georgetown. It is a cabal. They yeah. all are from the same area. They went to the same schools. Uh, no one is going to step out of line. And I'll tell you what, some of the worst judges were appointed by Donald Trump. Now, I talked yeah. to him about this two yeah. years ago. And of course, he's taking recommendations like you do from people who, you know, the Federalist Society and others. 
one of the worst judges in Washington, Tim Kelly, whose wife works for the mayor of Washington, D.C., Muriel Bowser. He was a D.C. Um, a prosecutor in the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office. I watched in his courtroom how he systematically denied the rights of the J6 defendants before him, including the Proud Boys, refusing to allow evidence to be entered into the court, into uh, the court, is including FBI informants. He fought harder than the prosecutors did to make sure that these J6 defendants had the book thrown at them, seditious conspiracy convictions, 22 years in prison for Enrique Terrio, who was in Baltimore on January 6th. I mean, we could go through it, but those are the high profile cases. I've also seen the, the lower um, defendants charged with misdemeanors. I was in Washington courtroom last week where the DOJ went back and wanted to put a six-year-old woman, a widow, just lost her husband of 40 years to liver cancer. She spent three and a half months in a, a dirty, uh, crime-ridden federal prison in Philadelphia on four misdemeanors and the obstruction conviction that was overturned by the Supreme Court. The DOJ wanted to put her back in prison. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. So I'm sorry for the rant, but again, thank you so much for covering this, but we need to get this to the right people. They need to understand what really happened here um, because until you have a full understanding and grasp of the inhumanity, the sadistic treatment of these J6ers by judges and prosecutors, uh, there won't be an appetite for the sort of retribution and consequences that we need. You're right. I mean, once you have proven that a system can be corrupted such as this, to destroy our fellow Americans, it must be raised to the ground. Much like every other, this has happened before in American history, where there are institutions that are antithetical to the Constitution, to the rights of Americans, and we do away with them. We dispatch them. And it's a wonderful trait, actually, in this country that we have the power to do that. And it's something, something so odious and something so criminal as this, I, I just, I could not agree with you more. Now, I want to get to something that I, I'm not, sure, I, I'm not sure I'm emotionally ready for, but I want to give you the opportunity to put some meat on the bones to your tweet saying that you've seen J6ers messages from them and they, they all know you and love you. I know many of them who, 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 who follow you like you are some like, like, um, like you are le like leading leading the uh, the Israelites out of Egypt like you you you're the one person speaking truth in this system and and on shows like ours about this topic and you're defending these people when no one else would so you have this great rapport with them and I know you know them and their families mm -hmm. can you build this out the text I'm getting from J6ers makes my heart so happy talk us through some of them well, I don't want to sound self-serving. I mean, obviously, a lot of them are just very grateful for the work that I've done and the coverage um, that I've given to their cases and their plight. Um, but they they just feel this burden lifted. You know, I, I heard from a woman today, another woman, Jay Sixer, who went to, to prison. And she's like, I finally feel like I can get myself back, my, my mental stability. I feel like my family can do that, too. Um, but, People just don't understand how tormented, not by, just by the DOJ and these judges, but by the media, hmm. the shameful J6 media who has added to their torture and torment. And this is national and local media who seize on these people and create a, some J6ers have told me what the media did to them was worse than what the Department of Justice did hmm. to them. So, yeah. um, just feeling like they are not that, that Donald Trump will follow through on his promise to pardon, to commute these excessive sentences. Um, and that I just think overall, Benny, the idea that they are not going to be called domestic terrorists by their own government, by their president, by the attorney general and by these judges anymore. They will take that scarlet letter of terrorist off their chest, off their family, off their livelihood. Um, get, try to get their reputation back, their businesses back. Um, so I think just overall, that's the hopeful feeling that has been expressed to me that um, this after four years of everyone from Joe Biden to Kamala Harris uh, to Merrick Garland, Christopher Ray, and these judges calling them terrorists, those days are over. So in Congress, 
we had a very powerful member named Liz Cheney who broke the law. You don't have to say it, I'll say it. Who clearly broke the law in manipulating witness testimony in her committee. Mm -hmm. And who is out this morning with a groveling, like thank, like thank you to Donald Trump, almost like it's time, time for us to move, a, time for us to move along. Okay, let's let's all ignore the last four years, which we are, will not forget. You now, Liz Cheney seemed to have sidled sidled up with Kamala Harris and destroyed her chances. So in some way, in in some ways, we're thankful. Donald Trump did historically well because Kamala with with Arabs in in Michigan because Kamala Harris promised to put a Cheney back in charge of the Pentagon. So on, in, a, in a sick way, we're kind of thankful for Liz Cheney. Yeah, thank you, Liz. Yeah, thank you for tanking Kamala. Every single party that the Cheneys are a part of, what a, what a pox, probably the most probably the most poisonous name in all of American politics, I, need, I think officially so now. So well said, absolutely. Yeah, every, every party they're a part of is, 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 a, is a can't, it immediately is terminal. That's right. And doomed. But I, uh, I want to give you the floor, Julie. Um, this has got to be probably enemy number one uh, when it comes to the rigging of uh, congressional systems against fellow Americans, against President Trump. And Liz Cheney was the dark witch behind all of it. Um, what should happen? Well, again, another investigation into DOJ collusion with Congress and the J6 Select Committee, because, of course, they were highlighting some of these J6 defendants, Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, while they were on trial in Washington, D.C. This was a coordinated effort. So that has to be added to this DOJ investigation. Liz Cheney, and I have a big piece on Real Clear uh, investigations on this. We know now that she was uh, conducting backdoor secret communications with Cassidy Hutchinson. This was facilitated by Alyssa Farah Griffin, who is now on The View. Um, she connected Liz Cheney with Cassidy Hutchinson, who had already testified three times behind closed doors to this committee. She was an aide to then Chief of Staff Mark Meadows on January 6th. Liz Cheney gets in communication with her. All of a sudden, Cassidy Hutchinson uh, let's go of her attorney, Stefan Passantino, who has a lawsuit, by the way, against the federal government, including the J6 Committee for Defamation for trying to destroy his career, because what Liz Cheney apparently did is get Cassidy to let go of Stefan, hire two other attorneys, and then all of a sudden her story changed. There she is, June 28th, 2022, making up full cloth the story about alleged conduct by the president in the SUV that day. Everyone has denied that story, including the driver of the limo and including Bobby Engel, who was his uh, um, his security detail. She gave this dramatic, uh, sensational account of what she had heard happen. None of it happened. It is a complete fab fabrication. Now, she did this under oath, right? Um, she also then changed her testimony about um, seeing weapons or hearing about weapons at the ellipse. She had testified previously. She didn't hear it. Then all of a sudden she did hear it. She claimed that she wrote a note that was supposed to be a tweet that Mark Meadows was dictating that the president could post that day. She said she wrote the note. She didn't write it. Uh, it, it was uh, a, another uh, attorney in the White House who wrote it. Why would you lie about that? Totally uh, perjured herself. Liz Cheney very likely suborned that perjury, encouraged her to do this, um, but also tampering with a witness, fabricating evidence, mm -hmm. interfering in a congressional investigation. She was a sitting, obviously, congresswoman. She also is an attorney. So they also have a bar complaint, uh, Stephen Miller's uh, uh, America Legal, uh, America First, filed a uh, bar complaint against Liz Cheney because you're not supposed to talk to someone who is already represented by an outside counsel. So, um, but this is just the beginning of that too, Benny. We know, and we've talked about destruction of evidence by this committee, all of the videotaped depositions, over a thousand witnesses to this committee, all those videos have been destroyed. Mm. Uh, Representative Barry Loudermilk, who's overseeing this investigation into the J6 committee, says that there's numerous uh, records and documents that are missing and have been destroyed. So 
people need to be held accountable for that. I mean, Liz Cheney, rule of law, constitution, you know, all the stuff she likes to say. Back at you, bitch. <laughs> That's Sorry. exactly that's exactly what you posted. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. We will enforce the rule of law and the Constitution. You and your committee will be investigated for fabricating evidence, tampering with witnesses, suborning perjury, perjury, and conspiring to defraud the United States of America. Get ready. Um, you know, Cassidy Hutchison, man, we've we've watched her on news interviews. Uh, <laughs> in in the words in the words of Donald Trump, she's a few French fries short of a happy meal. Yeah. And um, I, I think that <laughs> I think I think that there is a big story that is hiding very, very, uh, very, very shallow uh, below the surface here. And uh, Cassidy Hutchison, I think, will sing like a songbird about what actually happened with the correct subpoena. So we have point. <laughs> We very I mean, Cassidy Hutchinson was, I think, just turned 25 when she was at the White House. She was very worried about perhaps, you know, she was dragged before this committee three times. Um, she was worried she was going to be bankrupted like everyone else. Now, Stefan Pesentino was being paid by uh, Trump's PAC to represent her. But obviously, she was very vulnerable, very fragile. Uh, and so Liz Cheney took full advantage of her. But to your point, she might uh, start seeing like a, a little canary once there's more legal pressure against her and a subpoena and potential perjury charges against her for not just lying under oath, but misleading the American people in the process. Man, we're really, we're, we're so incredibly thankful for you and your work, Julie. Uh, well, you're gonna, you, we're going to have a full, we're going to have a fun four years, man. This is yeah. a, this is going to be a clean, a cleansing fire for this country. And it's, it's going to be biblical. It's going to be exciting. And we're, th we're so thankful for you. Um, uh, this has been a wild ride and, um, man, it's just, and it's, the golden era is just getting started. So <laughs> well, I'm thankful to you and your team. And again, bringing all of my reporting to your audience, it has made such a difference. I think, you know, I think there was part of what happened yesterday is what you're saying. People want this corruption out of our government. They want nice. the weaponization of federal agencies to be perched. And I think that that's something the media is not picking up on, but I, I certainly believe that that was a part of Donald Trump's huge victory yesterday. You're so awesome, Julie. Uh, you have you you have the, the love and you are cherished by our audience. Uh, we, we got your back on everything. Thank now you. it's time to get to work. Now the fun part starts. So exactly. So here we go. Uh, right. Godspeed, Julie Kelly. Everybody, go follow. Seven hundred and thirty thousand Americans can't be wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Uh, Maybe the, that little, one. <laughs> the doggy, the doggy's in control now. Come That's on, right. it's but... your dog. It's your boys. <laughs> See you, Julie. Thanks, buddy. Godspeed. <laughs>